Virtual reality is not only about VR games and experiences. In fact, lots of people use VR headsets just to watch movies and series on a big virtual screen. In today's video, I'll explain to you why the Pimax Crystal is such a great VR headset for this purpose, especially if you are a picky enthusiast striving for the highest image quality and clarity. I will also show you my favorite apps that I use to play all kinds of video files. We'll cover traditional 2D or two-dimensional movies on a big virtual screen, video streaming services, 3D movies and of course 180 and 360 degree movies and uh, including some uh, educational content, uh, just for science. Hi everyone and welcome back, my name is Martin or Sweeviber. Before we go through the options on how you can watch various movie types in VR, let me first explain to you why you should do so and why today's high-end VR technology is finally mature enough for this purpose. You may or may not remember this, but roughly 5 years ago I made a video about watching movies in VR on a Pimax 8K and a 5K Plus, I think. Already back then, in the early days of virtual reality, it was a hot topic. Since then, a lot has happened and improved with the VR headsets, especially on the high-end side of virtual reality. Today, VR headsets with ultra-high resolutions, innovative pan technology, way more sophisticated lens optics, as well as standalone features enables a whole new experience with vastly improved image quality that simply immerses you like never before. I can admit that while the previous generations of VR headsets were kind of capable for watching movies, there were still lots of technical limitations that made VR users hesitant to use their headsets as home cinema equipment. Many enthusiasts, myself included, felt that the overall image quality just wasn't good enough. And that was because of multiple factors. Back then, the VR headset had quite a poor color reproduction, washed out black levels and most importantly, a too low display resolution introducing various flaws such as the well-known screen door effect or a pixel grid across the view. A lot of deal-breaking factors were also caused by the early day optic lens technology that suffered from screen reflections and glare, possible distortions and lack of edge-to-edge -edge clarity. Having a 100-inch big cinema screen in front of you while watching movies is indeed an amazing experience, but not so much when the image quality barely reaches or even matches your old bedroom TV. A few years ago, high-quality 4K content just didn't look anything like 4K when viewed in VR. Imagine watching a dark scene in a movie having distracting, heavy reflections across your entire view you're constantly seeing a noticeable pixel matrix across your cinema screen. You're also seeing kind of a blurry view in the peripherals that makes everything outside of your center spot just not sharp or even distinguishable. Then add more flaws, such as low image peak brightness, visible mirror effect, and the black levels that just makes all black environments look kind of grayish. Just a year ago, now this was how you could summarize the experience of watching movies in VR. In fact, when it comes to many mainstream VR headsets available as of now, especially the standalone alternatives, many of them suffer from these weaknesses still today. Luckily, the latest high-end oriented VR headsets, such as the Pimax Crystal for instance, basically eliminates most of these issues. And that is by providing top-of-the-line image quality thanks to the combination of innovative lens design and some of the best displays available. And this is what I mean by saying that the latest VR technology is finally mature enough to deliver a true cinematic movie experience in VR. Sure, there are dozens and dozens of different VR headsets out there made by many different brands. Some of the standalone ones are also lighter, smaller in size, more comfortable maybe, and more versatile than the Pimax Crystal. 
Today there are tons of people out there daily enjoying movies and series on their Quest 2 and Quest 3 or Pico 4, both in standalone mode and by streaming the image from a PC. These headsets are cheaper and therefore more accessible to the mainstream audience. For the average VR user, these headsets are a no-brainer to purchase, of course. But how about if you are a true movie enthusiast? Kind of the pixel peeping geek, just like me, never getting satisfied with the image quality. Maybe an enthusiast that used to spend big money dedicating an entire room in your home, turning it into a home theater. What if you are the person that tends to never watch any movie or series outside of your 100 inch projector screen or your massive QLED or OLED TV? Well, in that case, you need a VR headset that can deliver or surpass the experience you normally are used to by now. Yes, I am a big VR enthusiast and in my opinion, the image quality is the main factor to even bother watching a movie in VR. For me, the level of image quality, sharpness and clarity in VR has to be extremely high to get satisfactory. Especially if I'm supposed to move my cinematic experience away from my current 65-inch 4K HDR OLED TV and put the content onto a virtual screen in VR. How could I even justify sitting here at home watching a movie in VR if the overall image quality looks better on my TV? Then why even bother? Well, sure, there's one thing if you are on the road, when traveling for instance. Killing time on a 10 hour flight maybe, or just sitting on a bus on your way to work, in that case almost any standalone VR headset will do the job to display a movie or a series on a virtual screen. But in most cases, or statistically, people tend to mostly watch their movies and series while being at home. And let's be honest now, home is the place where the high-end movie experience happens these days. Uh, well, more so than in the cinema at least. Now here is where a high-end PC VR headset like the Pimax Crystal comes into play. Thanks to the Crystal Custom Aspheric Glass Lenses, the VR image is sharp across your view basically all the way to the edges. That ensures that the corners of your movie screen stay sharp and you can now easily spot details and read the subtitles by just moving your eyes instead of moving your head around from side to side because that's what people do a lot when watching movies in VR. The optics design and the surface layers of the Pimax Crystal's aspheric glass lenses also eliminate all possible optical reflections. This means that dark movie scenes stay dark as intended without reflections. Bright objects within pitch black environments never produce that distracting glare or god rays anymore. With dual QLED panel boosting a resolution of 2880 x 2880 pixels per eye, the screen door effect or the pixel matrix is completely gone. The sharpness and optical clarity achieved finally do justice to 1080p or 4K or 8K content or even higher resolution movies. Not to mention the QLED color reproduction that significantly boosts the color range, creating vibrant colors while still keeping skin tones natural. Black levels are also no longer an issue with Pimax Crystal's displays that utilizes full array local dimming backlight. The displays are illuminated by thousands of backlight zones across the image. This allows the headset to turn off backlight zones behind objects or environments that are supposed to be black while maintaining perfect highlight in bright areas where it's supposed to be bright. Additionally, this boosts the image contrasts to insane levels, making the image to literally pop. Thing is, you need to actually experience a movie on the Pimax Crystal to really understand its advantages and really see the difference for yourself. It's hard to describe this with words and even harder to showcase it on a YouTube video. Bottom line is that the Pimax Crystal and its crystal clarity is probably your best choice when it comes to watching movies in VR, especially if image quality is your main or highest priority. And I think most people who ever tried the crystal will agree here. Ok, I know, some of you may still ask the question, why even bother watching a movie in VR? 
especially today when large screens, QLED and OLED TVs are so good, so accessible and now also relatively cheap. You see, watching movies in VR is practically like going to the cinema without even paying for a ticket or even leaving your home. The nearly unlimited number of VR environments you can use in VR media players will create any kind of preferred atmosphere for you. With just a click of a button you can spawn from a huge IMAX cinema to a cozy home theater room with a huge screen in front of you. And you can do that alone or together with family members or friends online, virtually sitting next to each other in a VR theater, chatting and interacting. So far we have only spoken about traditional or regular 2D or flat movies. But there's way more video content to enjoy in VR. How about watching a nice movie in three dimensions with true stereoscopic 3D view and depth perception? Well, that's just one of the strengths of VR. Let's face it, today you can barely find any TV of any brand with 3D feature included. 3D TVs and those polarized 3D glasses are for some reason not sold anymore. If you ask me, 3D movies are far from dead. In fact, many 3D creations or productions are still being made with some of the best movies out there. For instance, Avatar 2, released less than two years ago, is available in 3D Blu-ray format just like its predecessor. The Avatar movies are two of the best 3D movies ever made, if you ask me, but if you don't go to the cinema to see the 3D movies, or if you didn't keep your old 3D TV, you won't be able to enjoy these movies in 3D anymore. Sure, there are still home cinema 3D projectors out there, but these are pretty expensive. And not every person has the room to fit an 80 or even 100 inch projection screen on the wall. Besides 3D, there's also movie content with 180 and 360 degrees field of view with or without 3D stereoscopic view, where you can basically look around freely in VR thanks to the head tracking. This kind of videos are made for VR headsets in the first place and the content's resolution is all between 4K and 8K, sometimes even higher. To really benefit from such high resolutions, you need a VR headset with display panels that can render the image free of visible pixels just like the Pimax Crystal does. Oh, and by the way, did you know that the adult entertainment industry is the biggest creator of 180 degrees field of view 3D content? Well, that's actually a fact. It might be a sensitive topic to discuss here, but in my opinion it's important and interesting part of the VR industry to mention. Let's be honest here, 3D adult video content is extremely popular and widespread today, and even if we don't want to admit it, many of us do consume it or at least have tested it. The huge library of 180-degree 3D adult movies has been rapidly growing the past 5-6 years and it's all thanks to the adoption of VR. Because whether you like adult entertainment or not, 180-degree capture in 3D brings the genre to a whole new level making it a highly immersive VR experience, trust me. Of course, today we also have a wide range of popular streaming services, online streaming services, such as Netflix, Disney+, Hulu and many others. These can all be enjoyed in VR on a big screen, and some of its content even supports 3D modes, as well as 180 or 360 degrees field of view modes. Now when we know how Pimax Crystal and, well, VR as a whole enhances the experience of watching movies and series in VR, let me show you a few ways on how to do so with the use of a PC VR headset such as the Pimax Crystal. As you may know, the Pimax Crystal is not only a PC VR headset, it also includes a standalone AIO or all-in-one mode similar to how the uh, Quest 2 and Quest 3 and Pico 4 operates. In other words, running cordless and on a battery, viewing the content through the built-in VR interface powered by a Snapdragon XR2 chipset, which the Pimax Crystal has. While the VR gaming library is still very sparse on the standalone mode of Crystal, there are still plenty of applications you can use to watch movies and series, both locally or by streaming online. Obviously, due to the limitations of the hardware, the standalone mode of Crystal does not run in native or full resolution of what Crystal displays are capable of. 
Despite that, with the latest updates of the Pimax Crystal, the standalone resolution is actually surprisingly high, I must say. Best part is that while in standalone mode, you get to keep almost all the benefits of crystal advantages, such as great edge to edge clarity, the popping colors, full array local dimming with the true black levels, an image free of screen door effect and totally free of glare and god rays. Personally, I think that the Pimax Crystal standalone mode is very capable of providing a great movie experience in VR, even if I know that most people won't buy the Pimax Crystal for this purpose alone, but it's a great bonus feature nonetheless. So let me first quickly show you a few examples in standalone before we move over to the PC VR mode. Let me just add this, the quality of the recordings is not so great uh, when doing them in standalone mode. There, it's, it's pretty difficult to even record the, the output of what you're seeing in standalone mode and the image comes out without the distortion profile applied. So it looks like the image is a little bit distorted, but that's not how it looks in VR actually. Anyway, first off, there is a built-in media player that supports mostly ordinary 2D movie video types. By transferring the files through USB cable straight to the headset, you can watch them instantly by just accessing them from the file manager. Well, this mode is quite limited, I must say, so you will certainly want to use a dedicated application for this purpose. The main one would be the Wireless Gig Media Player, which is in fact available today directly from the Pimax store in the standalone mode. This application is well known and has been around for PC VR headsets through Steam for years now, so it's pretty great that it's been ported for the standalone use and available in the Pimax AIO mode. Wireless Gig supports basically all the video formats and codecs available, including 3D side by side and 3D over and under videos, 180 degree panorama videos, 360 degree video content and so on. The user interface is simple but really great and handy. It's easy to navigate with the crystal controllers and while also having tons of options and customizations available. You can watch movies with subtitles, multiple older tracks, adjust 3D settings and field of view, and the quality of high resolution content looks awesome indeed in the standalone mode. Now, while Pimax is awaiting more VR media players and streaming services to be supported, there are many great Android media players out there and most of them can easily be sideloaded to the crystal by connecting the headset through USB to your PC. We have VLC, we have MX Player, X Player, Kodi and Plex and many others. As for streaming services, by sideloading YouTube as well as a whole bunch of other well-known options, you can stream your favorite content straight into your standalone crystal wherever you are. Well, I know, the full potential of the Pimax crystal can only be achieved when connecting it to a PC and after all, that's why most of you are buying this headset in the first place. PC VR mode lets you run the headset in its full resolution and have various refresh rate options such as 120Hz, 90Hz, 72Hz, which should match all sorts of media content specific frame rate. Use 90 or 120Hz for 30 and 60 frames per second videos, while the 72Hz mode is ideal for 24 frames per second movie or film content. Probably the easiest way to enjoy video content while in VR and being connected to a PC is to use any of the available virtual desktop applications. This mirrors your PC monitor view inside of VR. There are both free applications as well as paid ones available. The majority of PC VR users already use SteamVR, so you may already know that the SteamVR dashboard includes a free virtual desktop feature. Although it is a simple and not so fancy or customizable option, it can actually be used to quickly get started and watch any local vi files of the 2D video content with any of the media player PC applications. This way you can also enjoy most of the streaming services such as Netflix or YouTube or Disney Plus directly through the browser of your PC when being in the uh, virtual desktop mode. But have in mind that the stereoscopic 3D videos and 180 or 360 degree content are not supported using the built-in SteamVR virtual desktop. 
If you use a Pimax headset such as the Crystal, there is an optional and free 3D frontend application you can download and install through the Pimax PC client called Pimax VR Experience that also has a built-in virtual desktop mode. It's a software that I actually created a few years ago together with Armin, a good friend of mine. Here you can switch between backgrounds and environments, customize the screen size and distance, adjust image preferences and even arrange multi-monitor setups. When it comes to VR media players and PC VR media applications available on Steam, there are two main options which are the most popular. Uh, that's the big screen beta and the virtual desktop. I guess everyone knows Big Screen Beta by now, and it's definitely one of my favorite apps. First off, Big Screen Beta lets you use your PC desktop in VR just like other virtual desktop apps, but it does that so much better than most. It has dozens of great looking VR environments and lots of customization. The coolest part with Big Screen is that you can watch movies, series or whatever together with friends in a virtual movie theater thanks to the cross-platform multiplayer. You can simultaneously watch movies with people from anywhere around the world, people you don't even know, by sitting next to them just like in real theater. It allows you to host your own rooms, hang out in social VR chat lobbies, participate in 3D movie nights, you can create your own VR LAN parties or public events and much, much more. It does support 3D movies, but not 180 or 360 degree video content. My second favorite for PC VR virtual desktop applications is simply called Virtual Desktop. That is a PC desktop mirror application combined with video player capabilities. It's not a free application though, so you will need to buy it from Steam. This application gives you the full support for 180 and 360 degree content, 3D content and most file formats. It's a very customizable software, almost a bit overwhelming at first, but th that is a good thing for the real enthusiast if you ask me. Another VR media player that I have frequently been using for 3D side-by-side -side and 180 or 360 degree video content, yes, including that kind of content, is a very small application on Steam called Simple VR Video Player. It's simple, extremely easy to navigate and perfect for quick video sessions without much distractions. It does not include any VR environments, but you can customize the surrounding backgrounds. And what I love about this software the most is that it's so minimalistic, simple and just works. It handles any 180 or 360 degree 3D content I've tried out of the box. There are of course image enhancements included, such as upscaling and anti-aliasing, but mostly those enhancements are not even needed. You can find the application on Steam and although it's not free, I think it's definitely worth to include in your PC VR library of media apps. So we did mention Wireless Gig before when using Crystal standalone AIO mode and originally this media player was made for Steam VR and the PC VR. Therefore it is available on Steam as well, definitely worth to pay a couple of dollars for, including full support for 3D, 180, 360 degree video plus a lot of customization available. One of the strengths of Wireless Gig is that it actually supports Alma Lens through the Steam VR. Alma Lens is a digital lens plugin for VR headsets with eye tracking such as Pimax Crystal. This awesome plugin uses eye tracking to perform lens corrections in real time, which further improves the visual clarity and the sharpness in VR as well as corrects other optical properties such as the sweet spot. But I will save a deep dive into the Alma Lens for another video. Lastly, I want to mention Skybox VR Video Player, another alternative for watching movies in PC VR. It's not a free application and maybe not a must have really, but something that makes it rather unique is the ability to actually recognize video type formats. It will automatically play the movie in 3D side by side, 3D over and under, 180 or 360 degree format or however it's supposed to be viewed in VR by itself, meaning that you don't need to ever change viewing mode manually with it. In fact, something you will need to do using the other VR media players and applications I mentioned before. 
So all these media players are just a few of dozens and dozens of different available media applications available for VR for watching movies and series in virtual reality. You may have your own favorites that I haven't even mentioned today, but at least I share the ones I'm frequently using the most. Anyway, with those apps and with the high-end virtual reality headsets such as the Pimax Crystal, you are definitely set for an amazing experience that will, in many ways, outperform your home cinema setup or your big OLED TV. For a VR enthusiast and a big movie fan, this is finally the right time where VR can actually be the main format for watching movies and series. Enjoying endless movie nights alone or with your family in VR. With time, I think VR will even get better of course, but as of today, I'm sure that the top-notch image quality and the immersion achieved with the Pimax Crystal specifically will certainly exceed the expectations for you and uh, most other movie enthusiasts out there, myself included, of course. I hope you enjoyed this video, thank you so much for watching and uh, we'll see each other in the next one.